Bismillah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Bismillah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, and a starin who won a stealth who won up me to be here when I do a kalu alay. When I would lay him in Shurudian for Sina, women say ye at your armor in a mea di hilla who fell a mudilla who may you the lil who fell a hardy ella. When I shed all la ilaha illa law who are the who la shedi kala. When I shed one nasigidana, when a big yana, or habibana, or shafiana, or mutana, Muhammad and Abduhu or a solo. My bad. فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم صدق الله العظيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا وإن الدنيا عرض حاضر يأكل منه البر والفاجر ألا وإن الآخرة أجل صادق يقضي فيها ملك عادل قادر يحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ألا وإن الخير كله بحذافيره في الجنة ألا وإن الشر كله بحذافيره في النار ألا فاعملوا وأنتم من الله على حذر واعلموا أنكم معروضون على أعمالكم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected ulama kiram elders, beloved brothers in Islam. In this age of zulmat and darkness, in this age which is reminiscent, reminds one of the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein he said, Badiru bil a'mal fitanan ka qita'im min al-layl al he said, hasten towards a'mal, persevere upon a'mal, never become complacent and take your deen and iman for granted. Why? Because fitnas are coming. Tests, trials, tribulations. He described the oncoming or the onset of these fitnas with the onset of sections of a dark night, portions of a dark night. Ulama explain the significance of this parable and example. They say the transition that occurs on a daily basis from light to darkness is not an instant transition. Lightness doesn't all of a sudden become darkness. But gradually, stealthily, secretly, Darkness encroaches upon one till all of a sudden you find it is completely dark. So Allah Rasulullah said, Fitnas will come like that secretly, stealthily from different directions. And what will be the effect of these fitnas? Yusbihu rajulu mu'minan wa yumsi kafira. The person will have iman in the morning and by the evening he will have become a kafir. Yumsi mu'minan wa yusbihu kafira. A person will have iman in the evening, by the next morning he will have become a kafir. And what will be the underlying cause? What will bring about this wholesale loss of iman? Those with miftahul jannah, those with the key to jannat, those who are born with the key to eternal paradise, eternal success, 
almost on a daily basis for them to forsake and give up the iman. Yabi'u deenahu bi'aradin min ad-dunya. He said, my ummah will sell their deen in return for the paltry gains of this dunya. And we see it. All we have to do is come out of our cocoon and just travel a little bit in the world. Sometimes for some worldly education, sometimes for a hamper of food, sometimes for some health treatment, sometimes for some medicine, almost on a daily basis, not in tens and twenties, but in hundreds and thousands, Iman is being sold. Just last year in South Africa, one town there was a Jamaat from Indonesia. There were ten brothers in the Jamaat. Two of them were... There was only one brother that was under 70 years of age. The other nine brothers were more than 70 years of age. They were spending four months in the path of Allah. They couldn't even speak English. One brother spoke broken English. We met this Jamaat. We asked him some Kal Guzari about his country. He says, Indonesia is the most populous Muslim country in the world. The population of Indonesia is approximately 280 million. He says, 15 years ago, we were 90% Muslim. Now we are 80% Muslim. If one has to do the maths, there's more than 30 million people in 10 or 15 years have become murtad. We become happy, one person accepts Islam. We have, we feel proud, we have achieved something. But little do we realize what is going on around us. 13,000 islands in Indonesia. He said the island that I come from, this brother comes from, he says there's 1.6 million Muslims and not one alim in the entire island. Not one person to teach them deen. Our Jamaat few years ago was in Nigeria. We went to one area, we met an alim that was working there, teaching there. He says 15 years ago when I came to this area, there was 100% Muslim. At that time one church organization came I met the leader of that organization, the Padri. He said, our target is that every four homes there will be a cross. He says, Monisab, go and see for yourself. Fifteen years have passed. This was 100% Muslim area. Every eight homes there is a cross. dunya. He said, my ummat will sell their deen in return for this dunya. There is no guarantee that we were born in a Muslim home. Or that we are reciters of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to pirham jannat ke tekedar ban gaya. The jannat is guaranteed. The sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who took deen directly from Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that jamaat which Quran placed the label upon radiyallahu anhum wa radu an, that jamaat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their iman the gradient of iman for the entire ummah till qiyamah. Allah said, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ That if you want to bring iman, bring iman like the sahaba of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was their attitude? What was their contention with regards to iman? Itabi'i says, I met 30 sahaba that took part in Badr. And what was Badr? Badr was the gradient by which Sahaba determined distinction. They said once before, a few decades ago, there was an ishtima taking place in Pakistan. And before that ishtima, Mala Yusuf Sahib Rahmatullahi was giving a bayan amongst the khawas. Khawas meaning people in government positions. So as was protocol for such a gathering, they began introduction that so-and-so is the Minister of Agriculture and so-and-so is the Minister of Water Affairs and the list went on. Minister of this and Minister of that. After the introductions had been completed, Azhar Maha Yusuf Sahib Rahmatullahi began his bayan. The first statement he made, 
He said, Aap look at the Aruf ho gaya. Introduction took place. This is a minister of this, minister of that, minister of that. He said, Mujhe kuch samajh mein nahi aya. I didn't understand anything. If they said this was a donkey and that was a dog and that was a monkey, I would probably have understood more. He was not maraub or affected by the protocol or the gathering because the message he was delivering was superior to that message. And this is the shan of a da'i. This is the shan of one who invites towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have in his heart the greatness of Allah. He said, Sahaba ke ta'aruf is bunyad par kabhi nahi hua. The introduction of Sahaba never took place on this basis. The introduction of Sahaba took place on the basis that this was a Badri Sahabi. This was a Sahabi that accepted Islam before Hijrat. This was a Sahabi after Hijrat. This was a Sahabi that took part in Hudaybiyah. According to the Qurbani, according to the sacrifice that was given for the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa On that basis, the ta'aruf of Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullah Ali Majmain took place. And what were Badari Sahaba? La Allah Ta'ala Ittala ala ahli badrin fakala i'amalu ma shi'tum fa inni ghafartu lakum. Bukhari Sharif Hadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah looked at the Sahaba that took part in Badr and Allah said, From now till you die, do whatever you want to do, Jannat is wajib for you. And yet this Tabi says, generation after Sahaba, that I met 30 Badri Sahaba and I did not find a single one of them that did not fear that he was a Munafiq. They never became complacent over the Iman. They never took it for granted. This age of Zulmat, this age of darkness, this age when to practice upon sunnah is being mocked at. This age when even the personality of Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not spared from insults. In such an age, such a period, such an era, my respected brothers, for these type of gatherings to take place. On the nisbat of the love of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the nisbat of the Jazba and the fikr of deen. This is not an ordinary thing. This is a great favor and ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shukr and gratitude for this is wajib. For us to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna quluba bani adama bayna usbu'ayni min asabi rahman yukallibuhu ma kayfa yasha. Surah Pak Islam said, the hearts of Ibn Adam are between two fingers of the fingers of Rahman. Allah can turn those hearts in whatever direction He wants. Like the poet says, Meri talab bi kisi ke karam ka sadqa hai. Ye qadam utha nahi, uthaya jata hai. That this desire that has come in my heart to go closer to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to acquire the knowledge of deen, to acquire the pehchan of deen, this jazba and zeal to sacrifice for deen. This is no kamal or achievement on my part. This is Allah's favor. Nabi Shu'aib alayhi salam, great Nabi of Allah. What does he say? وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ Whatever I have done, it is with tawfiq from Allah. Acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On Him I, I place my trust and to Him too I turn. Like this example is given, there was one person, he bought some fish in the marketplace and then he looked around for someone to carry his load. So he hired somebody, they agreed upon a payment, a stipend. So the laborer was carrying the fish and on the way home they passed a masjid. When they passed the masjid, this laborer there's a time for salah. So he told the person that had hired him that give me permission to make salah. So he says, okay, no problem, I'll wait for you here. So the laborer goes in the masjid, he makes salah and after all the other musallis have come out, he is still in the masjid. Long time passes. 
So this person gets irritated. And he shouts out that what is keeping you so long in the masjid? What is keeping you so long in the masjid? From inside the masjid, this person responds that that zat and that being that is keeping you out of the masjid is the one that is keeping me in the masjid. Why? Because this is tawfiq from Allah. This is acceptance from Allah. And this is not something that we can ever take for granted. Unfortunately, this quality of shukr, of appreciating the ni'mats and the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a very large extent has come out of this, of this ummah. One occasion, Dawood alayhi salam says to Allah, كَيْفَ أَشْكُرُكَ وَشُكْرِ لَكَ نِعْمَةً كَيْفَ أَشْكُرُكَ وَشُكْرِ لَكَ نِعْمَةً He says, oh Allah, how can I make your shukr? How can I express my gratitude to you? When even this fact that this desire has entered my heart to make your shukr, that is also your ni'mat. That is also from you. So how can I possibly make your shukar? So Allah Ta'ala addresses Dawud Ali Salam, Al-an shakartani. Oh Dawood, now that you have realized this, realized what? Ya ibn Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. Realized what? That, oh people, every one of you is faqeer. Every one of you is a beggar. Every one of you is totally and completely dependent on Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. Allah is the only one who is ghani, who is completely independent of this entire creation. Allah is samad. Samad. What is samad? We read, Qul Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. Samad. That zat and that being that is in need of no one and everyone is in need of him. He doesn't take help from anything. He is not in need of anything. Nothing benefits Allah. Nothing harms Allah. Nothing is hidden from Allah. He is before everything. He is after everything. Fawqa kulli shay, he is above everything. Yumitu kulla shay, he gives death to everything. Khaliqu kulli shay, he is the creator of everything. Khabirun bi kulli shay, he has knowledge of everything. Latifun bi kulli shay, he exhibits his kindness towards everything. Laysa ka mithlihi shay, and there is nothing that is like Allah. Samad, totally, completely independent. Allahu la ilaha illa hu. Allahu la ilaha illahu. This declaration, this declaration formed the basis of the da'wat of every Nabi of Allah. This was the Alif Batatha. This is where the message of every Nabi of Allah started. From Adam alayhi salam to Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever the halat, whatever the condition, Whatever the circumstances, whatever was in front of that Nabi, whether the people, the disbelievers of that time, had government at their disposal, had technology at their disposal, had science at their disposal, had agriculture at their disposal, had commerce at their disposal, whatever the situation was, Allah sent every Nabi primarily and fundamentally first and foremost with this Dawud, with this invitation. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقْ وَالْمَغْرِبْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ أَلِفْ لَامْ مِيمْ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ وَرَبُّ الْمَغْرِبَيْنِ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ That which Qur'an sounds out again and again and again and again. One basic message, know and understand that it is only one Allah. 
It is only one Allah. It is only one Allah. First se lekar, arsh tak. From the earth to the arsh of Allah. Where does the kalam of Allah start? Where does Quran start? Unfortunately, my respected brothers, to a very large extent, our elders are, our elders are crying out. This reality that Aaj Quran ek na ashna kalam ban chuki. Now today this Quran has become an irrelevant message. The munasabat, the link, the attachment of this ummah with the Quran is no longer there. This is that amanat. This is that trust. What does Allah say? لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. That if you had to reveal this Quran upon a mountain, that mountain would have been crushed. It would have been rent asunder out of the fear of Allah. This is that kalam. When Tabi'i says, I saw Usman bin Affan رضي الله تعالى عنه in the haram. He was making tahajjud salah. He said, Allahu Akbar. I stood behind him, deciding to follow Usman. He says, Sayyidina Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu started from Surah Fatiha by the qasam of Allah. He reached Surah Nas before going to Ruku. The entire Quran, the entire Quran in one rakat of tahajjud salah. And what would Usman say? Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Law tahurat qulubukum. لَوْ تَهُرَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مَا شَبِعْتُمْ مِنْ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He would say, if your hearts were pure, if your hearts were pure, you would never get tired of listening to Qur'an. This is that kalam. This is that kalam that even the hearts of zulmat, even the hearts full of darkness, even the hearts full of hatred for Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those hearts also were affected. Abu Jahl, Akhnas bin Shariq, Utba, they would secretly gather every night to listen to the Quran of Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day they get into a conversation. In the day, in Auzubillah, we are calling him a madman. In the day, we are mocking at him. In the day, we are telling people not to listen to him. And at night, we are listening to his Quran. If the people come to know, how are we going to save face? So every one of them takes an oath that this is the last time. After this, we are not coming back. The next night, each one thinks to himself that he took an oath that he won't go. So if I, I go, he won't come to know. And all three of them come back to listen to the Qur'an. Such is the kashish, the magnetic effect of the kalam of Allah upon the hearts of zulmat and darkness. And yet today, what is the value that the ummah has for the Qur'an? Open a new shop, khatam of Qur'an. Move into a new house, get a few hufaz, recite Qur'an. Ramadan, take the Qur'an out of the shelf, read a little bit. But... What is the message of the Qur'an? What is Allah saying to us? What is my Allah asking us, speaking to us in the Qur'an? Ali radiallahu ta'ala used to say, whenever, whenever the desire entered my heart to speak to my Allah, I would recite, perform two rakats of salah. And whenever I desired that my Allah should talk to me, I would recite Qur'an. This is that message that shook the hearts of humanity. I remember a few years ago there was a jamaat from Qatar in South Africa. In that jamaat there was one person from the royal family. Elderly person. He gave bayan, broken, he spoke. His son was in the jamaat. Many years he had been in Dawat and Tabligh. His son called me one side. He said, today is the first time my father gave a dini talk. And he said, when we are young in the house, if ever my father saw me reading Quran, he would get angry with me. And he would say, why are you wasting your time? Why don't you spend your time in your studies? This is the, has become the attitude of the ummah towards the Quran. 
That leave the ummat away from the masjid. Leave the ummat away from the masjid. That ummat that is in the masjid. Five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, twenty-five years. Every day he is listening to the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmid Deen. Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'een. How many places in the Quran Allah is addressing us directly? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ayyuhu believe. More than 80 places Allah addresses us directly. We get a complex legal document. We'll pay someone to interpret it for us. And we won't be bothered about that, how much it costs. But leave the ummah away from the masjid, the ummah that is in the masjid. 15, 20, 25 years of his life has passed. And not one day has the desire entered the heart that what is my Allah saying to me? What does my Allah want from me? Maybe we feel we've gone past the cell by date. Brain cells are dead, we are old. But why deprive our children of the ulum of Quran? Why deprive them? My son has become a doctor, my son has become a lawyer, my son has become an engineer, my son has become a scientist. Somebody brought his son once to Mulisa. He said, Mulisa, make dua for my son. Mulisa raised his hand, Ya Allah, make the son of so and so a muazzin. This man gets upset. He says, I told you to make dua, not bad dua. Muazzin. Some place in India, what they say, Bangi Saab. Why didn't you say, Ya Allah, make him a doctor, engineer, lawyer? Why you said muazzin? And yet, what did Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa say? He said, La yudawwadu fi qabrihi. La yudawwadu fi qabrihi. The, doc, the body of the doctor and the lawyer and the engineer and the scientist will become the fodder and the food for the insects of the grave. Allah will make the body of a mu'azzin haram on the insects of the grave. The people with the highest ranks, the highest ranks, longest necks on the day of judgment will be those who used to call out Adhan. On that day there will be an announcement. Allah wa innakum ja'altum nasaba wa ja'altu nasabi ja'altu akramakum atqakum walakin abaytum wa qultum inna fulan ibn fulanin khayrun min fulan ibn fulan al-yawma abaw nasabakum وَأَرْفَعُ نَسَبِي أَيْنَ الْمُتَّقُونَ أَيْنَ الَّذِينَ تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعَ أَيْنَ الصَّائِمُونَ That day the angel will announce that you people had one basis of respect, dignity and honor and we had one basis. What was your basis? پَيْسَا هُوَ تُكَامْ بَنَيْغَا Material wealth, material achievement of this world and you look up to him. What they say, what our elders say? Bahar ke sarmaya. What is outside? What is outside has become the basis by which we are judging one's success and achievement. This mentality is not the mentality of a mu'min. Like the poet puts it beautifully. He says, Yamshil faqiru wa kullu shayin dhidduhu. Yamshil faqiru wa kullu shayin dhidduhu. Tarahu mubghidan wa laysa bimuthnibin. يرى العداوة ولا يرى أسبابها حتى أن الكلاب إذا رأت ذا ثروة خذعت لديه وحركت أذنابها وإذا رأت يوما فقيرا غابرا نبحت عليه وقشرت أنيابها. He says the poor man walks and the whole world is against him. The poor man walks and the whole world is against him. He sees the disdain on your face. He sees the manner that you are looking down upon him. But he has not committed any crime. He sees your hatred. He doesn't know the cause. And such is your attitude of judging people on the basis of the material wealth that they have. That this has even affected the animals. Hatta anna al-kilab. Even the dog. When it sees the man with the Hugo Boss suit and the tie on. Then it wags its tail and stretches out its four paws. And when it sees the poor man, it barks at him and chases him. This mentality, this thinking, by which status is given on the basis of material wealth and achievement, what is the poet saying? This is the mentality of a dog. This is the mentality of an animal. 
Sarwar e Kainat, the greatest of Allah's creation, the pride of Allah's creation, Sayyidul Awaleen Awal Akhirin, Janabi Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if there was any justice, if there was any foundation supporting this thinking or this ideology that advancement is based upon material wealth, then how do we explain? Where Umar radiallahu ta'ala who says, دَخَلْتُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَإِذَا هُوَ مُتَّجِعٌ عَلَىٰ رِمَالٍ حَسِيرٍ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ فِرَاشٍ Muttakiyan ala wisadatim min udum, hashwaha leaf. He said, I entered upon the room of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did he observe? What did he observe? He says, I saw my Nabi lying upon a straw mat. There was no blanket. There was no mattress. There was no sheet. He said, I saw the imprint of the mat on the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his pillow? Not filled with down feathers. Not a soft pillow. His pillow was full of date leaves. Omar says, I looked around the room. What else was there? It comes in one why There was a piece of leather that was tanning. Leather that is tanning gives off a foul stench. There was nothing, nothing else. Tears enter the eyes of Omar. Ya Rasulullah, Udu Allah, Fal yuwassi ala ummatik. O Nabi of Allah, make dua to Allah. Make dua to Allah. What dua? Fal yuwassi ala ummatik. That Allah must open the door of wealth upon your ummat. Allah must open the door of wealth. Yet what is Quran telling us? What is Quran telling us? What is the value of wealth? Of the material pomp and glitter and glamour of this dunya? Ya'lamu, Ya'lamu. Look at the mode of expression. Allah calls out, Ya'lamu. Jan lo. Achi tara jan lo. Ya'lamu. Come to know, realize, wake up, hearken, listen. Ya'lamu. What, oh my Allah? Annam al hayatu dunya la'ibun wa lahu. Wa zinatun wa tafakhurun baynakum. Wa takathurun fil amwali wal awlaad. Kama thali ghayth. أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور متاع الغرور متاع قليل بيت العنكبوت كسراب بقيعة لا يحسب يحسبه الظمآن ماء من كان يريد الحياة الدنيا وزينتها نوفي إليهم أعمالهم فيها وهم فيها لا يبخسون أولئك الذين ليس لهم في الآخرة إلا النار وحبط ما صنعوا فيها وباطل ما كانوا يعملون ولولا أن يكون الناس أمة واحدة لجعلنا لمن يكفر بالرحمن لبيوتهم سقفا من فضة ومعارج عليها يظهرون ولبيوتهم أبواب وسرر عليها يتكئون وزخرفا وإن كل ذلك لما متاع الحياة الدنيا والآخرة عند ربك للمتقين verse upon verse upon verse of the Quran there is no time to go into the translation but just the verse that I recited now from Surah Zukhruf what does Allah say? Allah says we wanted to make the homes out of the kuffar out of gold we wanted to pave their streets with gold. We wanted to shower the wealth of the world upon them. Why did we not do this? Because we feared that the people of Iman, by looking at the wealth and pomp of the kuffar, the knowledge and greed of this dunya will cause them to forsake the Iman. Otherwise, this world has no value in the sight of Allah. Ashabul Jannah. أصحاب الجنة يومئذ خير مستقرة وأحسن مقيلة. What is Quran saying? What is Allah saying? أصحاب الجنة, the people of Jannah. Listen, O Ummah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Jannah is a very beautiful place. خير مستقرة وأحسن مقيلة. People are looking for property, property investments. What they say on the Atlantic seaboard. Oh, if you got property on the shores of the sea, the price escalates. Some people are looking for residential. Some people are looking for commercial property.
सब कुछ छोर देने वाले हैं भाई नथिंग गोन कम विद अस नथिंग इज गोन कम विद अस मालिक बिन दिनार एंटर्स द कोर्ट ऑफ हारून रशीद हु इज हारून रशीद द खलीफा रूलिंग थ्री कॉन्टिनेंट थ्री कॉन्टिनेंट रूलर and malik bin dinar enters his court he addresses him what does he tell him assalamu alayka ya zahid assalamu alayka ya zahid peace be upon you o zahid what is zahid the arabic word zahid comes from the word zuhd zuhd means one who contents himself with very little malik bin dinar who probably has patches on his clothing He is saying to the ruler of three continents, "Peace be upon you, O one who contents himself with very little." Harun Rashid is surprised. He says, "You are calling me Zahid. You are calling me Zahid." What is his response? He says, "Nazar ta ila dunya alati la tu sawi jana habaud." He says, "O Harun, O Harun." your gaze went towards this dunya which is not equal to the wing of a mosquito my gaze went towards akhirat my gaze went towards jannat which is limitless you have contented yourself with very little ashabul janna yawma idhin khairum mustaqarra wa ahsanu maqila allah is calling out oh madam muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam You want something of value? My jannat is valuable. My jannat is beautiful. What did the Surah Pak Salam say? If someone has to bring something from jannat, how big? He said the size of a fingernail. The size of a fingernail. If someone has to bring something from jannat, the size of a fingernail. What is the size of a fingernail? One blade of grass also is too big. One droplet of water is too big. If someone had to bring something from Jannat the size of a fingernail in this masjid in Bolton and what does Rasul Pak Salam Rasul say the entire world will light up the whole world will light up and the fragrance of this will permeate throughout the entire world such a jannat such a jannat Allah has made ma la aynun raat ولا اذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر no i has seen no ear has heard no mind has ever imagined such a place it is said this human being his fitrat is what he wants change all the time he wants change if you look at the animals or the other creations of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lion what it was eating 100 years ago and what it is eating today is the same the goat the sheep 100 200 300 years ago what they were eating they eating the same where they were staying they staying the same all are the creations of allah if you look only in this insan allah has kept this capacity he wants to change all the time He's got the latest Mercedes Benz, and they come out with a new spec. What happens? Why? What happened? You changed your car. He said new spec came out. How much was the difference? Hundred thousand pounds. Pagal ho gaya. Spec change. Why? That one was no good. That's old shape. This is new shape. In everything, constantly this human being wants to change. Like you get a youngster. He sees a girl. She's totally unsuitable, but he says, "I've got to have her. I've got to get her married to her. She has to be my wife. I'll kill myself. I'll commit suicide." Parents tell, "Bye. It's not suitable for you. Bye. No good. Not not a good background. No, no, no. I must have her." And then he gets married to her. One month later, the jagra starts. He's looking somewhere else. whatever you acquire of this world how quickly how quickly once this human being gets what he wants he wants change in fact ulama say that this world does not have the capacity of fulfilling the desire of a human being 
Because his desires are changing faster than the pace at which the world is changing. Each time he wants better and better and better. Why has Allah kept this quality? Why has Allah kept this capacity in insan? In order to prepare him for Jannat. In order to prepare him for Jannat, Allah has kept this capacity. That is why even this brain, this brain, Allah has restricted it in this world. He said the ordinary human being in his lifespan he'll only use 4 to 5 percent of his brain. The other 95 percent is sleeping. Einstein when they exhumed his brain they found he had used 11.2 percent of his brain. The rest of the brain is sleeping. Such a complex brain Allah has given this human being. Each one of these things is shouting out to insan to recognize the qudrat and the greatness of Allah. It is said this brain is made up of 100 billion cells. 100 billion cells. And the relationship and the pattern by which these cells are set out are unique to each human being. And it has to be in that set pattern. The moment things move out of sequence, ask the doctors what will happen. Which are the doctors also don't really know. But they may know a little bit more than the layman. Each human being, each human being, it is said the nerve fibers of the brain of each human being, if you had to open it up, if you had to open it up from this masjid, Zakaria masjid in Bolton, if you had to open up the nerve fibers of the brain of one human being and take it up to the moon, the moon is 280,000 kilometers away from the earth. The nerve fibers of the brain of one human being will go from this masjid to the moon, around the moon and come back to this masjid. More than 560,000 kilometers long is the nerve fibers of the brain of each human being. And from where does this come? هَلْ أَتَعَلَ الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهَرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءً مَذْكُورًا Allah says, O insan, did they not pass upon you a period of time? Lam yakun shay'am madhkura. Your dhikr didn't take place. No one spoke about you. You didn't exist. Inna khalaqna al-insan. We created you. From what? Min nutfatin amshaj. From a mingling of sperm. Somewhere Allah says, Min ma'in dafiq. From a spurt of liquid. Somewhere Allah says, Min ma'in maheen. From a drop of worthless fluid. Walakad khalaqna al-insana. Min sulalatin min teen. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُطْفَةَ عَلَقًا فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ عِظَامًا فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمًا ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخَرَ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ Allah says verily we created this insan from an extract of clay from an extract of clay he was made into a drop of sperm in a safe receptacle from a drop of sperm into a clot of blood from a clot of blood into a lump of flesh stage upon stage upon stage of creation how many children are being formed at any given time how many women are pregnant Different stages of formation of this insan in the, fee, in the womb of the mother. Somewhere an ear is being formed. Somewhere eyes are being formed. Somewhere nose are being, is being formed. Somewhere fingers are being formed. Somewhere feet is being formed. Somewhere head is being formed. Brain is being formed. Kurbani time just passed. Have you looked at the sheep brain? Beja, they call it. Tell the little children that today if they made beja curry, they don't want to eat it also. But look at the sheep brain and the human brain. Similar. In composition similar, how does an ocean of emotion come into a piece of flesh? How does the capacity of intelligence, the capacity of perception, the capacity to have feelings, happiness, kindness, hatred, jealousy, malice, enmity, enter into a piece of flesh? An ocean of emotions. How much have we not taken for granted? Have we ever pondered? Have we ever pondered over the qudrat of Allah? This human being is breathing in and out. It is said the average human being breathes in and out 20,000 times every day. Subconsciously, without even thinking, in, out, in, out, we are breathing. 
What are we breathing? We're breathing in oxygen. Oxygen. What they say H2O is water. O2 is oxygen. Breathing in oxygen. What are we giving out? We're breathing in that which is pure. And we are contributing back to this earth. What? CO2, carbon dioxide, which is impure. That is insan's fitrat. That is why it comes in one athar. Allah Ta'ala addresses this insan. Inni wal jinnu wal insu fi in azim. There is a great dispute between me and insan and jinnat. What is the dispute? What is the injustice? Akhluk wa yu'bad ghayri. I created them. They worship others besides me. Arzuk. I sustain them. Wa yushkar siwai. They make shukar to others besides me. Khairi ilal ibadi nazil. Khairi ilal ibadi nazil. The best from me is coming down to them. Wa sharruhum ilayya sa'id. And the worst from them is coming back to me. Allah gives you pure, you give back impure. Allah sends down his ni'mats. Instead of gratitude, you repay it with ingratitude. Allah says there is a great dispute between insan and jinnat. Kam atahabbabu ilayya bin ni'am. Kam atahabbabu ilayka bin ni'am. Wa ana ghaniyun anka. Wa kam tatabaghadu ilayya bil ma'asi wa anta faqeerun ilayya. Allah says in how many countless ways have I not shown you my muhabbat? Have I not shown you my love by showering ni'mat and ni'mat and bounty and bounty upon you? And in how many countless ways have you not shown me your dushmani and your adawat? By disobeying me and not utilizing my ni'mat correctly. And yet what is the fact of the matter? Ana ghaniyun anka. I am not in need of you, you are in need of me. I am not in need of you and you are in need of me. I send my ni'mats to you to show you my love. You repay me with your dushmani and your adawat by breaking my commands. And yet still Allah does not cut it off. This municipality department don't pay the electricity bill for one month and see what happens. Don't pay the gas bill and see what happens. They'll come and cut it off. These eyes, these ears, these hands, these feet, each one of these is the ni'mat of Allah. What is Allah's bill? What does Allah want from us? Hadith Qudsi, Allah says, I have given you, ja'altu laka aynayn, wa ja'altu lahum ghita, fanzur bi aynayka ma ahlaltuhu lak, فَإِنْ عَرَضَ لَكَ مَا حَرَّمْتُهُ عَلَيْكَ أَطْبِقْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْغِطَى Allah says, I have given you two eyes and I have placed a veil in front of those eyes. Look with the eyes at that which I made halal for you. Look at that which I made halal for you and when that which I made haram comes in front of you, أَطْبِقْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْغِطَى Drop the gaze. Drop the gaze. Yet when the daughters of others come in front, when that which Allah made haram comes in front, this insan is aping, he's staring. Does Allah take away his eyesight? Does Allah cut off the light, the nur in his eyes? Jaltu laka uzunain. Allah says, I gave you two ears. Utilize those ears to listen to that which I made halal for you. Youngsters, their bodies jiving from morning till night. With those iPods and those earphones stuck in the ears. Shaking. Cars, fancy cars, woofers, subwoofers, tweeters. What is blaring? Music is blaring. The voice of shaitan is blaring. Quran, we don't have time. Quran, we can't listen to more than a few minutes. Hours and hours listening to haram music. And what do they say? Music is food for the soul. Music is food for the soul. That which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-ghina yumbitu al-nifaq fi al-qalb kama yumbitu al-ma'u al-zara. He said like how water causes crops to grow in exactly the same way the listening to haram music will cause nifaq and hypocrisy to grow in your heart. (coughs) 
And what will be the effect of it? What will be the effect of it? Ulama say at the time of mort to recite kalima will become difficult. Kalima will not come on the lips. Earlier today I was in the Darulum in Blackburn. I'm digressing. I mentioned one Kar Guzari to the students that in 1995 when our Jamaat was in Jordan, two doctors from Syria, they were doing specialist degree in America. Two doctors from Syria, they were returning back to their country. So they stopped in Jordan to spend 10 days in the path of Allah. Both were becoming specialists. Last year our Jamaat was in Joburg, Markaz, Baitul Noor. After Isha Salah, when I walked in, one brother came towards me and he says, do you remember me? I didn't really remember him. It was 18, 17, 18 years, but I just took a chance. I said, aren't you the doctor from Syria that joined us in Jordan? He got very happy. It was the same person. After 17, 18 years we met. met. He said, I no longer live in Syria because of the halat and condition he had migrated. He says, I'm living in Qatar. I completed my degree. I'm a rheumatologist. He says, when I joined the hospital in Qatar, Muslim country, when I joined the hospital, the protocol of the hospital was that for the first year, you had to work in the casualty department before you go into the whatever specialist field you specialize in. So casualty, emergency, accident victims, many people will die also. He said, I heard the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man kana akhiru kalamihi, la ilaha illallah dakhal al jannah, that person whose last words are la ilaha illallah will enter into jannah. He says, I had heard this hadith. So this thought entered my heart that many Muslims will pass away in front of me. Let me see how many of them recite kalima at the time of passing away. It was after Fajr in Ramadan, he was giving this talk in the Markaz in Transvaal. And he asked the Majma the question, he says, in one year, 100 people passed away in front of me, Muslims. How many recited kalima? 50%, 60%, 80%, 20%. He says in one year, not one person. Not one person recited Kalima at the time of leaving this world. He says, I became despondent, I became depressed. That what is going on? When there were two days left in my tenor, the last two days, one victim came in and recited Kalima before he passed away. He says, I ask myself every day, every day I ask myself this question, am I going to be amongst the 99 or am I going to be amongst the one? Such an environment we are living in. Our elders are calling out to us, by This ummah was not sent for jobs and shops. This ummah was not sent for degrees. This ummah was not sent for the glitter and glamour of this dunya. You are Khalifatullah wa Khalifatul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are the representative of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon this earth. This ummat was given a job, a task, a mission on the basis of which this ummat was raised above every other ummat. Such a tide of fitna, such a tide of zulmat, such a tide of darkness in every direction. Where are our youth? This ummat that produced Rabia Basri radiallahu anha. This ummah that produced Khadija al-Kubra, Aisha umul muminin Fatima al zahra The daughters of the same ummah are naked on the stages. This ummah that came to bring the Quran alive, the youngsters of the same ummah have guitars in their hands. Their bodies are jiving to music. What did Rasulullah Pak Salaam say? He said, turn your ears away from the haram music of this world and what will Allah give you? Ma min abidin yadkhulul jannata illa wa yajlisu inda rasihi wa inda rijlayhi 
سنتان من الحور العين تغنيانه بأحسن صوت ما سمع الإنس والجن مثلها أوحى الله تعالى إلى شجرة الجنة أن اسمعي عبادي الذين شغلوا أنفسهم عن المعازف والقينات فتسمعهم بصوت ما سمع الإنس والجن مثلها أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم two ahadis put it together رسول الله صلى الله عليه said stay away from the haram music of this world make toba from that turn your ears away from that what will Allah give you when you reach Jannah two hurayin at your head two hurayin at your feet Allah will command the rivers the trees Allah will command the palaces of Jannah. Allah will command the environment of Jannah. You are the orchestra. You are the background. And these two whores at the head, at the feet will start singing for you. No insan or jinnat has ever heard anything like this. Stay away from the haram music of this world. Lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. وَزَوَّجْنَاهُمْ بِحُورٍ عِينٍ Allah says we will make your nikah with the whores of Jannah. With the women of Jannah, min rijleha ila rukbateha min az zafran, from her feet to her knees are made out of zafran. Min rukbateha ila thadiyha min al miskil khalis, from her knee to her chest is made out of pure musk. Min thadiyha ila anukha min al ambar il ashal, from her chest to her neck is made out of ambar. Min أنقها إلى رأسها من الكافور الأبيض from the neck to the top of the head is made out of camphor not sand not water not the elements of this world زافران musk amber camphor and then a hair will flow from the top of her head to her feet these women will be sixty hands length long hundred and thirty feet tall their hair will be such that Rasulullah Pak Salaam said, if one strand, if one strand of the hair of the woman of Jannah had to be suspended in this world, the entire world will become fragrant. If she turns her head, the movement of her hair will be like the scattering of clouds in the sky. In Adbarat or Aqbalat, hiya muqbila, qasiratu tarf, qasiratu tarf, لم يتمثهن إنس قبلهم ولا جان. Not like the women of this dunya. Today they are looking at you. Tomorrow they are looking somewhere else. Like someone said, an intelligent man is a man who can make more money than his wife can spend, and an intelligent woman is a woman who can find a husband like that. As long as the purse is open, the gaze is there. Otherwise, it's somewhere else. If there is an environment of bedini, but what are these women? قاصرات الطرف. The gaze is fixed on you. لم يتمثهن إنس قبلهم ولا جان. No insan or jinnat has ever touched her. Forget touching her. Has ever even seen her. حور عين كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون. حور عين كأنهن بيض مكنون. كواعب أترابا عربا أترابا. كأنهن الياقوت والمرجان. خيرات حسان. What what words of expression Allah has used in the Quran? There is no time to describe. Suffice to say, such is the beauty of these women that the first gaze, the first gaze, the first gaze, your wife in this dunya, look at her five minutes and you start fighting. The first gaze at the woman of Jannah, the first gaze will last for 40 years. Such beauty, such beauty it is said when she walks towards you in Aqbalat or Adbarat hiya muqbila, whether she's walking towards you or away from you, she'll still be looking at you. Her gaze will not shift anywhere. Kullama nazarat ilayha is dadat fi ainiha sabaina dayafa min al husni wal jamal. Each time the Jannati will look at his wife, he'll look away when he looks back, she will have become 70 times more beautiful. Allah has given this capacity of change in this dunya, in the fitrat of insan to prepare him for jannat. Because each time he will look 70 times more beautiful. Such women, such women Allah has prepared. لو أن الحوراء بسقت في سبعة أبحر لمزجت الماء من عذوبة فمها. If she had to spit, there is no spit in Jannah. Why spit is an ayb? Spit is something that is looked down upon. But if she had to force it, force it, a few droplets of saliva, Allah's Rasul said, 
if, it, if she had to spit in the waters of the seven oceans, لَكَانَتْ أَحْلَى مِنَ الْأَسَلِ The waters of the seven oceans will become sweeter than honey. What will be the sweetness and the attraction of such women? لَوْ أَنَّ بَنَانًا مِّن بَنَانِهَا بَدَى لَتَمَسَ دَوْ الشَّمْسِ كَمَا تَتْمُسُ الشَّمْسُ دَوْ النُّجُومِ Janabi Rasulullah s.a.w. said, When the sun rises, the stars become invisible. They haven't gone anywhere. The light of the sun is such you cannot see the stars. He says, if the fingertip of this woman of Jannat had to come in front of the sun, the sun will become invisible. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anumah used to say, if such is the beauty Allah has kept in her fingertip, what must be the beauty in the rest of her body? Each time she sways her hips, there will be 100,000 invitations and suggestions towards ecstasy. وَزَوَّجَنَاهُمْ بِحُورٍ عِينٍ وَزَوَّجَنَاهُمْ بِحُورٍ عِينٍ Lower your gaze from the haram women of this world. Lower your gaze from looking at the daughters of others. Allah says, we will make your nikah. We will make your nikah with these pure women. What soda, what destruction, what loss is this ummah bringing upon itself when it has made this world its target? When it has made the temporary attractions of this world and turned its back on akhirat, on jannat, ashabul jannati, yawma idhin, khayrun mustaqarra, wa ahsanu maqila. Allah says, my jannat is very beautiful. My jannat is your actual goal, not this dunya. But so much the talk of dunya, so much the glitter and the glamour and the attraction of this dunya, that our elders are saying that the immersement in this dunya has collided, collided with our minds, with our hearts. An accident has taken place. Ask the doctors, sometimes after an accident, people suffer concussion, amnesia, memory loss. They say like that, the love and attraction and the rat race and the day and night bark door behind this dunya has collided with the minds and the hearts of this ummah. Amnesia has taken place and this ummah has forgotten, forgotten who we are and why Allah has sent us. Forgotten. Bulge, Riebi Bulge, Ke Bulge. Muddat Hui, the chair of Allama Iqbal Ghaliban. Muddat Hui, Sayyad Ne Chora Bito Kya. Tabe Parwaz Nahi, Rahe Chaman Yad Nahi. The pigeon is described. A pigeon, a bird that was captured when it was an infant. It grew up in a cage. Its entire life in captivity. Finally, one day when it became a fully formed adult bird, the hunter that had captured it, some raham, some mercy enters his heart. And he opens the door of the cave, of the cage. And he says, fly now. Fly now. Fly now where? Experience the blue yonder. Experience the beautiful blue sky. Experience the beautiful breeze against your beak, against your feathers. Look at the snow-capped mountain peaks. Look at the lush landscapes. Soar to your heights. But what happens? Taabe parwaz nahi, rahe chaman yad nahi. One tear, solitary tear, pours down the beaks of that bird. It looks at its captor and it says, What blue yonder are you talking about? What sky are you talking about? What lush mountain peaks are you talking about? What, ro what roaring waterfalls are you talking about? What lush landscapes are you talking about? Forget flying, I have even forgotten how to flutter my wings. This exact poem is sadiq on the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. When this pukar is made, when this call is made, you are not an ummah of shops, you are not an ummah of jobs, you are not even an ummah of this temporary dunya. You are kuntum khayra ummatin, ukhrijat, 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 lin nas. You are the best of every ummah. You were taken out, you were selected, you were chosen, lin nas, for the hidayat of humanity. This Quran, hadha balagul lin nas, it is a message Tabligh for the entire humanity. This ummad, ukhrijat lin nas. The Nabi of this ummad, arsalnaka lin nasi rasula. The Quran of this ummad. 
شہر و رمضان الذي انزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس the Kaaba of this Ummad إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببكر إن أول بيت وضع للناس that which Quran is calling out للناس 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 you have been sent for the entire humanity to go person to person town to town village to village alley to alley gully to gully and call one one person tell them what tell them of the greatness of Allah tell them of the kibriyah of Allah tell them of the jalal of Allah tell them of the azmat of Allah tell them who is Allah اوخ الله تعالى الى موسى نبي بني اسرائيل ان في امه محمد لرجال يقومون على كل شرف وواد ينادون بشهادة ان لا اله الا الله several thousand years before this ummah could come into existence Allah Ta'ala sends wahi to Musa alayhi salam that in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam they are men in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam in an ummah to come they are men where will you find them on every high ground every low ground every gully every alley every street what will they be doing what is their job what is their day what is their night yunadun bi shahadati allah ilaha illallah they will be inviting people towards the greatness of allah they will be telling them who is allah they will be inviting towards Allah. They will be calling out this towards Allah. The nida of Allah's greatness will resound in the atmosphere. And what does Allah Dalla say to Musa alayhi salam? Fajazauhum jazaul ambiya. I will reward them like I reward the ambiya. I will reward them like I reward the ambiya. This is not an ordinary ummah. The love and attachment and drive behind this valueless dunya has blinded our hearts and our minds. This thirst, this thirst, this unquenchable thirst and fire within our bellies for the love, for the attachment of, this, of the things of this world. This insatiable thirst has made us become ghafil, has made us become ghafil and negligent of the jannat and jahannam of six billion insan. Six billion insans, jannat and jahannam does not worry us as much as the fulfillment of our desires of dunya is worrying us. Not for nothing, my respected brothers, has the tide of aggression of humanity turned against this ummah. Not for nothing has halat and conditions turned against this ummah. This ummah has forgotten, not only forgot, forgot that it forgot who we are and why Allah has sent us. Quran is calling out, Fafirru ila Allah, Fafirru ila Allah, Fafirru ila Allah, run back to Allah, run back to Allah, run back to Allah. This is an ummah of Dawah. Ask the shopkeeper to talk about his goods from morning till night, he'll talk. Ask the salesman to talk about his goods from morning till night, he'll talk. Ask the housewife to talk about the children or to talk about fashion or to talk about handbag or talk about shoes from morning till night. Tell the same person, speak about Allah. Speak about the greatness of Allah. Speak about the favors of Allah, the deen of Allah. Every breath of air, 20,000 times breathing in and out. This brain Allah has given you, the hands Allah has given you, the feet Allah has given you, everything around you is calling out. This is why Azad Mawlana Yusuf Sahib Rahmatullah used to say, Am isli an nahi kehte hai, ki Allah ki barai bayan karo, kyunke ye ek scheme hai, jiske zariye se ab logo ko chille aur teen chille ke liye tiyar karenge. We are not saying to you speak of Allah's greatness, because this is some scheme by which you are going to prepare people for chilla and three chillas. Am isli an kehte hai, ki Allah ki barai bayan karo, kyunke Allah ka haq hai. Allah ka haq hai, ki uski tarah na kiya jai. Makhluk ka zikr bimari hai, khali ka zikr uske ilaj hai. We are saying to you, speak of Allah's greatness because it is the right of Allah. It is the right of Allah that His praises should be sung. To speak of the creation is a sickness. To speak of the Khalik is its ilaj. To speak of Allah is its ilaj. This is the ummah of Dawat. Ulama say, Haramun ala qalb. Haramun ala qalb. An yadkhulahu nur wa fihi shayun mimma yakrahuhu Allah. It is haram. It is impossible. It is inconceivable that the nur of Allah's marifat, the nur of Allah's recognition will ever enter a heart in which there is ghayrullah. This ghayr has to come out. 
This da'wat of la ilaha illallah, shops are not doing, jobs are not doing, technology is not doing. First selekar arsh tak, Allah begins his kalam, Allah begins his Quran. Where does Quran start from? Arif lam mim, dhalik al kitab, la rayba fi. This is the book, there is no doubt in it. Hudallil muttaqeen, it is hidayat, it is guidance, it is light for the people of taqwa. Where does taqwa start? Where does iman start? Where does hidayat start? Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. What does this mean? First selekar arsh tak. From the earth to the arsh of Allah. Whether it is the rivers, whether it is the trees, whether it is the mountains, whether it is the birds, whether it is the insects, whether it is the animals, whether it is insan, whether it is jinnat, whether it is the industries, whether it is science, whether it is technology, whether it is the oceans. 72% of the earth is the waters of the oceans. They are more makhluk of Allah in the oceans than on the land. It is at one cubic centimeter of water of the oceans contains more, more living organisms than the number of human beings on the surface of the earth. More than 6 billion makhlukat Allah has kept in one cubic centimeter of waters of the oceans. Whether it is the waters of the oceans moving up, whether it is this solar system in which we are living in, the sun, which is the center, nine planets, 31 moons, 30,000 comets and meteors, hundreds of thousands of asteroids, whether it is the Milky Way conjunction of 17 galaxies, what we call a super galaxy, whether it is the other 500 million and more plus galaxies that Allah has created, moving upwards, whether it is the first heaven, Malaika of the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven, seventh heaven, Malaika of all these, all these heavens, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو No one knows of the armies of Allah besides Allah. Above that, whether it is the sea, one wave of that sea is so huge, it will swallow up this entire universe moving upwards whether it is the arsh of Allah, the kursi of Allah, arsh far selekar arsh tak, whether it is Jibrail, Mikail, Israfil Israel, the countless malaik of Allah, from the earth to the arsh of Allah, where does hidayat start, where does iman start, where does taqwa start, alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb that everything is dead everything is dead Nothing lives, nothing dies, nothing moves, nothing stops moving, nothing advances, nothing declines, nothing rises up, nothing comes down, except with the permission, kudrat, will and irada of one Allah. La ilaha illallah, jo la kaha, wo la hua, wo la bi usme la hua, juz la hua, kul la hua, phir kya hua, Allah hua, Allah hua, Allah hua, this dawad has to be given. Person to person, town to town, alley to alley, gully to gully. This ummah was sent for this. This was the day of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was the night of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was the cry of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May you uini, may you suruni, hatta ubalga risalat Rabbi. Ten to ten, person to person, in Mina, in Makkah, gully to gully, alley to alley. What was his pukar? Who will shelter me? Who will become my nasir? Who will become my helper? Hatta ubalga risalat Rabbi, so that I can make tabligh of this deen. What hardship didn't he go through? What difficulty didn't he go through? What persecution did they not put him through? He goes to the Banu Amar bin Sasa tribe, invites them. What do they do? They pick up stones, start flinging it at him. Finally, he takes refuge with the Banu Hanifa tribe. Gives them the da'wah of Iman. What do they say? They say our leader Buhaira is not here. We have to make mashura with him before we can respond to your message. They give him a little bit of shelter. The spark of hope enters the heart of Rasulullah That perhaps they will listen. They have entertained me. They are sheltering me. They have given me refuge. Maybe they will listen. When Buhaira comes, they say this is the Qurayshi youngster that says that he is the Nabi of Allah. Muhaira looks at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and with arrogance, he says there is no one in the entire Mina that is more hated to me than you. If my people had not given you refuge, instead of my tongue, I would have spoken with my sword. Get away from here. 
dejected, heartbroken, heart sore. Allah's Rasul mounts the camel. When his back is turned, they don't leave it at that. What does Buhaira do? He takes his spear. He pokes it into the flank of the camel. The camel jerks. And when it jerks, Allah's Rasul is flung onto the ground. When he's flung into the ground, body full of dust, face full of dust. He hears the peals, the ringing laughter of mockery. Around him in every direction. His Mubarak face also. What face? What face? Ulama say amongst the myriad, amongst the myriad mu'jizat and miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was his Mubarak face. That anyone that looked at his face also would sit with sachai in his heart just by looking at his face would get hidayat. Just by looking at his face, this conviction would enter the heart that this is the Nabi of Allah. Such a face, Jabir bin Samura, radiallahu ta'ala, who says, Kuntu fi laylati adhiyan. It was a 14 full moon night. I was lying in the courtyard of Masjid al Nabawi. The head of Rasulullah sallallahu was in my lap. I looked at the 14 full moon. Then I looked at his face. Then I looked at the 14 full moon. And then I looked at his face. He says, By the qasam of my Allah, the nur, beauty, and effulgence on the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was more than the moon also. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala says, Ma ra'aytu shay'an ahsana min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ka'anna al-shamsa tajri fi wajihi wa idha dhahika, wa idha dhahika yatala'law fi al-judur. He says, I have never seen anything more beautiful than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira says, it would appear to me as if the sun would shine from the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he would smile, the nur of that smile could be seen on the door, on the wall in front of him. One night, Aisha radiallahu anha, in the dusk, in the darkness, she's cleaning vegetables. Allah's Rasul Allah's Rasul is looking down. All of a sudden, it is humid. Beads of perspiration had formed on the brow of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Was pouring down his forehead. All of a sudden, Aisha stops what she's doing because Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is looking down. He is not aware. He becomes conscious that Aisha has stopped. He looks up. She's staring, astonished, shocked, mesmerized. He says, Ya Humaira, which was an affectionate term by which he used to address Aisha. What has happened? Why are you shocked? What has happened? She said, Today I have understood the expression of Abu Kabira Huzali, referring to a poet of the past, the poet of Jahiliya. The poets, they would form imagery in their words to try to describe their ma'ashuqa, their object of ishq and muhabbat. But those were lies. She says, Abu Kabira Huzali describing his ma'ashuqa. He described a black night, a dark night. All of a sudden there is an electric storm. The beads of white lightning are shooting across the horizon. There is no words that can do, this, do justice to describing the beauty of such a sight. She said the beads of perspiration falling down your forehead reminded me of this expression of Abu Kabira Huzali. وَإِذَا نَظَرْتُ إِلَىٰ أَسِرَّةِ وَجِهِ بَرِقَتْ كَبَرْقِ الْعَارِضِ الْمُتَهَلِّلِ Such a face. On the morning of his birth, there is one Jew running around madly in Makkah Mukarama. Was a child born last night? Was a child born last night? A male child? They say, yes, a male child was born. Is his father alive? Yes, I'm not referring to that child. Tell me, was there a child born last night whose father is not alive? Finally, they say to him, the grandson of Abdul Muttalib was born last night. He says, take me to that child. Take me to that child. Newborn baby, just a few hours old, when Rasulullah is brought in front of that Jew, just looking at his Mubarak face, what does he say? Wailun libani Israel. Wailun libani Israel. Laqad kharajatin nubuwatu minha. Wa ruhtum biha ya ma'ashara Quraysh. Wallahi la yastu wanna bikum satwa. Yadharu amruha fi sharqi wal gharb. He says, halakat and destruction to the Jews, to the Bani Israel. Nubuwat has left you forever. وَرُحْتُمْ بِهَا يَا مَعْشَرَ قُرَيْشِ مُبَارَكْ تُيُّ قُرَيْشِ وَاللَّهِ لَيَسْتُوَنَّ بِكُمْ سَتْوَى يَذْهَرُ عَمْرُهَا فِي الشَّرْقِ وَالْغَرْبِ He says, by the qasam of my Allah, the nur of this child will light up the entire east and the west. Abdullah bin Salam, a scholar of the Jews, an alim of the Jews, he says, I heard that that person who claimed to be the Nabi of Allah had come to Medina Munawara. 
The whole of Medina gathered to listen to his first khutbah, his first sermon. Abdullah bin Salam says, My curiosity also was piqued. I wanted to see, I wanted to hear what he had to say. The incident is long, I'm cutting it short. He says, When I went for the first sermon of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Falamma nadartu ila wajihi, Falamma nadartu ila wajihi, Tabayyantu anna wajahu laysa bi wajhi kadhaab. He said, When I looked at the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mere dil ne yaqeen kar liya. This conviction overtook my heart that this is not the face of a liar, this is the face of a nabi. Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, Lana shamsun, Lana shamsun, Walil afaqi shamsun, Wa shamsuna, shams khayrun min shamsi samai, Lianna shamsa samai, Tatlu ubaada fajrin, Wa shamsuna, Tatlu ubaada ishai. She used to say, We have one sun, and the horizon has one sun. We have one sun, and the horizon has one sun. Our sun is better than the sun of the horizon. Why? The sun of the horizon rises up after daybreak. It is already light. If the sun didn't rise, what difference does it make? She says, our sun will light up the darkness of the entire world. Like the poet says, Afalat shumusul awwaleen. Afalat shumusul awwaleen. Wa shamsuna, wa shamsuna, wa shamsuna la taghrub. The poet says, Afalat shumusul awwaleen. The suns. The sources of light of the nations of the past have set our sun, our source of light, our Hadi, our guide, our Muhammad, our Ahmad, our Mahi, our Hashir, our Aqib, our Fatih, our Taha, our Abu Qasim, our Yasin, our Sayyidul Awaleen, our Akhirin, our Khatamul Anbiya, our Mursaleen, our Siraj, our Munir, our Mubashir, our Dail Allah, our Muzammil, our Muddathir, Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This universe will be destroyed. The physical sun will set. The sun also will be destroyed. But his sun, his source of light, his guidance will never ever set. Such a Nabi, such a Nabi. And yet, what is the condition? Kuffar are laughing around him. That same Mubarak face that Quran takes qasam upon. Quran takes qasam upon. Wad duha, wad duha, wa layli da saja. According to the tafsir e kabir of Allama Fakhruddin Razi rahimullah. What is one translation of this wad duha? E mere habib tere roshan chehre ki qasam. Oh my beloved, by the qasam of your shining face, wallayli da saja, by the qasam of your black zulfa, Quran takes qasam on that face. And that same Mubarak face is full with soil, full with dust. And the kuffar are mocking and scoffing and laughing at him. What was this for? For this Mubarak deen, for this kalima, for this deen, for the shahadat of la ilaha illallah to reach you and I. That which today we have taken for granted, that which the price tag of qurbani and sacrifice that was given to it, this ummah has forgotten and forgotten that we forgot. We have forgotten his Mubarak tut. That was made shaheed in Taif. We have forgotten the stones that he tied to his Mubarak stomach. We have forgotten the manner in which both his daughters were given talaq in public. For what maqsad? For what object? We have forgotten the months upon months that the fire would not be lit in his house to cook food. We have forgotten the tears crying at night. Aisha Umul Mu'mineen says, My Nabi stood on the musalla. He cried and he cried and he cried. Muslim Sharif Riwayat. She says, He began reciting Quran. He said, Oh Allah, Ibrahim Khalilullah. Allah said to you, فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Those who will follow me, they are from me. Those who are, will dis- disobey me, you are غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Isa Ruhullah said, إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكْ وَإِن تَغْفِلْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Oh my Allah, if you punish them, they are your slaves. If you forgive them, you are mighty and wise. Both these verses, what do they mean? Oh Allah, forgive them if you want. Don't forgive them if you want. What does he say? I do not say to you, like Ibrahim Khalilullah said, and I do not say to you, like Isa Ruhullah said, Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati. Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati. Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati. Aisha says, he said this over and over and over again till his whole body started shaking. The tears started pouring down his cheeks. His beard became wet with tears. The tears started pouring from his beard onto the ground. Allah sends Jibreel. Allah sends Jibreel. Allah who is Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada. Alimun bidati sudur. Allam. Alimun bidati sudur. Allamul Ghuyub. Allah who knows everything sends Jibreel. Oh my Habib, why are you crying like this? Why are you crying like this? Why did Allah send Jibreel to ask this question? 
Allah didn't know, na'uzu billah, Allah knew. Why is Allah sending Jibreel to ask this question? If Jibreel did not come to, put, to ask him this question, then these nights of tears, these nights of qurbani, these nights of sobbing, these nights of supplicating before Allah for his ummah would have remained a raz and a secret between Habib and Mahbub. Allah knew Jibreel was sent so that you and I come to know. You and I come to know. You and I, so that that youngster of the 14th century of Islam, whose body is jiving to music, so that that young girl who is parading publicly, and that young mother who takes that five or six year old child dressed in a frock, that young mother with the Ray-Bans on, and with the hair open to the park, leaves that child there. Which, which, which ideology is going to teach that little baby that tomorrow you have to become the daughter of Khadija or the daughter of Aisha or the daughter of Fatima to Zahra when, this are the, when these are the mothers of the Ummah. Those nights, this question was asked so that that businessman whose business is drenched in riba and so that that youngster who has caught the collar of his parents and his father and has said to him, what, are you ever, what have you ever done for me? And that young girl of this Ummah who is barking like a dog at her mother so that each aspect of this Ummah come to know in whose chest are you piercing the dagger? Who are you hurting? That Nabi who finished himself like this. That Nabi who cried night upon night like this. Today you have made your idols who? That pop star. This soccer personality. People whose every day is in zina. Every night, people whose every day is in sharab. Every night is in zina. And that Nabi who finished himself for you. That Nabi who cried like this. Night upon night. Jibreel comes. Oh my Nabi. Allah is asking. Why are you crying? What does he say? He says, Jibreel, the worry of my ummah is making me cry. The worry of my ummah is making me cry. Jibreel goes back, comes back with a message. Oh my Habib, do not cry like this. Do not finish yourself like this. Sanurdika fi ummatik. Sanurdika fi ummatik. Sanurdika fi ummatik. We will please you with regards to your ummah. We will please you with regards to your ummah. What does Ibn Abbas say? La arda Muhammad. Wa wahidun min ummati fi nar. Muhammad will never become happy as long as one ummah is in Jahannam. Where is this cry today? Where is this concern today? This ummad, the love, attachment, chase, rat race, blind thirst of the un- unquenchable thirst of this dunya has collided with the minds, collided with the hearts. We have forgot, forgot that we forgot, not even realized who we are, why Allah has sent us. Omar, Omar says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Udu'u O Nabi of Allah, make dua to Allah. Allah increases wealth upon your ummah. Why? فَإِنَّ Faris wa Rum قَدْ وُسِّ عَلَيْهِمْ وَهُمْ لَا يَعْبُدُونَ Allah. Why? Because the Romans and the Persians are in the, lap of, are in the lap of luxury and they do not believe in Allah. What is the reaction? What is the sabaq? What is the direction that was given to this ummah? He gets up in a fit of rage, strikes the chest of Umar, strikes the chest of Umar, aga kara rahe, waking him up to the reality Awafi antahada yabn al khattab. Awafi antahada yabn al khattab. Umar, are you still in a doubt? Umar, are you still in a doubt? What was this ummad sent for? What was what is my day? What is my night? What what is my worry? What is my concern? Umar, are you still in a doubt? Ulaika qawmun ujjilat lahum al hayat al dunya. Ama tarda an yakuna lahum al dunya wa lana al akhira. They are a people. Allah has given them dunya. Umar, Umar, Umar. Does it not please you? They will get dunya, we will get akhirat. They will get dunya, we will get akhirat. What does he say to Aisha? Bent over. Bent over in the night, she wakes up. What is the Nabi of Allah doing? Pressing his stomach to the plank of the bed. Ya Rasulullah, what has happened? What has happened? She bursts into tears. With her hand, she starts pressing his stomach. What has happened? He says, Aisha, the pangs of hunger. The pangs of hunger become too difficult for me to bear. Ya Rasulullah, make dua to Allah. Allah opens the door of wealth. What is his response? Mali walid dunya. Mali walid dunya. Aisha, I will not make the dua. What is there for me in this dunya? This is the ummah of akhirat. This is the ummah of jannat. This is that ummah. Not only for our own jannat. Ukhrijat, ukhrijat. Lin nas, taken out. Selected to show one one person the road to Jannah. The same Umar, the same Umar, his tarbiyat made in the hands of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his khilafat. The leader of the Ghassan tribe, Jawala bin Aham Ghassani, becomes murtad. He runs away to Istanbul. He is given position and prominence by the, by the ruler of Rome. 
Jamaat goes, they meet Jabal bin Aham, say, say, give him the Dawat of Islam, come back to Islam. He says, I have become murtad, how will my Toba be accepted? They say, Tuleha made the false Dawah of Nubuwat, Allah accepted his Toba. Your Toba also will be accepted. What does Jabal bin Aham Ghassani say? I will come back two conditions, two conditions. What are the two conditions? First condition, Oman must give me his daughter in Nikah. Second condition, I want to become the Khalifa. 2,200,000 square miles Khilafat. Jabala says, daughter of Omar in Nikah, I want to become the Khalifa, then I will accept Islam. They say, Omar will definitely give you his daughter, but Khilafat, that is dependent on Mashwara. We cannot answer now. They go back to Medina, when the car Guzari is given to Sayyidina Omar bin Khattab. Understand, listen with the ears of Iman. What were the seeds? What were the seeds of concern, of dard, of pain for humanity that Rasulullah Islam planted in the hearts of Sahaba Ikram? What is the reaction of Umar? He bursts into tears. Why didn't you promise him the Khilafat? Why didn't you promise him the Khilafat? He would have been saved from Jahannam. He would have been saved from Jahannam. He would have been saved from Jahannam. Go back now. Promise him the Khilafat also. As they reach Istanbul, Taqdeer of Allah becomes Ghalib. When Janaza is coming out, Jabal Amin Aham died upon Kufr. But what was that jazba? What was the seed that Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam planted in the hearts of Sahabi Kiram? Janaza of a Yahudi is being carried in Medina. The Nabi of Allah is crying. Sahaba say, Alasta Yahudi and Ya Rasulullah is he not a Jew? What is his response? He says, Alaysat nafsun tafallatat minni. Alaysat nafsun tafallatat minni. Is it not another ummati of mine that I have lost? Is it not another ummati of mine that is going to Jahannam forever and ever? How can I not cry? This ummah has forgotten, forgot that it forgot. When this ummah was moving, when this ummah was moving, when this ummah was flying, when this ummah was not like that bird that got up, brought up in captivity, one lock of the shop, one lock of the job, one lock of the wife, one lock of the children, and the hidayat of humanity, the hidayat of insaniyat. The Khilafat of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the dard and pain for humanity, getting up in the night crying for the hidayat of humanity. That like that bird, Taab Parwaz Nahi, Raya Chaman Yad Nahi, I have forgotten, not only forgot, forgot that I forgot. When this Ummat was moving, then, then my respected brothers, within 80 years from the demise of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two thirds of the known world had entered into the light of Islam. Allah bin Khadrami radiallahu anhu, moving with the Jamaat in the Bad of Allah, the sea, the river comes in front, river comes in front, Abu Huraira is the narrator, when this Ummad was moving, Allah made this Alam Musakhar to it, what does Allah bin Khadrami say, Ya Aliyu, Ya Azimu, Ya Halimu, Ya Karimu, he takes Allah's name, four sifat of Allah, we are the Jamaat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, moving in the path of Allah, moving in the road of Hidayat, Sammullah, Waqtahimu, he says, to the Jamaat, say Bismillah and jump. Not one person in the Jamaat says, Amirul Mum, Amir, Amir Saab, what is wrong with you? Have you lost your marbles? Pagal These are not boats, these are not canoes, these are horses. Sammullah waqtahimu. Abu Huraira says, Fasammayna waqtahamna faabarna wa ma ballal ma'u asfala khifafi ibilina. He says, we said Bismillah and we jumped and we crossed the water. Forget Forget the rider, forget the camel. He said the water did not even wet the hooves of the camel. When this ummah was on its maqsad, innakum ala bayyinatim mir rabbikum, Allah says, you are a bayyina, you are a clear proof from your Rabb. Allah's health, Allah's nusrat, Allah's qudrat will be with this ummah like it was with Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, like it was with the sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah filled the cover of Hazrat Mawlana Ilyas sahab rahmatullahi alayhi wa nur. Allah used that banda of his to wake us up to this reality, to remind us of this sabak that we forgot and we forgot that we forgot. Bulge, or ye bhi bulge ke hum bulge, nasiyam mansiya, out of the mind, out of the heart, like one of our elders, one Ahmad Lat sahab, Allah give him long life. He says, today, the thief, the thief steals, there is ihsas in his heart that I am doing wrong. The sharabi drinks, there is ihsas in his heart that I am doing wrong. The ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, insaniyat is going towards jahannam, he is chasing after this dunya, even the ihsas has not entered the heart that what I am doing is wrong. 
We are not an ummah that came to make me, me, myself, myself, my respected brothers. This is an ummah that was sent, selected, chosen to make our day, our night, our fikr, our cry, that of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. To learn this responsibility, our elders are saying, if you haven't been, first step is to go four months in the path of Allah. If you have been four months every year in the path of Allah, don't look left, don't look right, don't wait for others. Jannat is the goal. Jannat is the goal. Our Jannat and the Jannat of Insaniyat stand up and give our names, my respected brothers, to go four, four months in the path of Allah. Himmat karo bhai.